man, it is hot today. Whoa, it's hot out here, man. It is hot today. You know it's hot out. Yeah, I just said that. I said it's hot out here, man. Yeah, you know it's hot, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Star, our tequila tour than here in the agave fields of Jose Guerrero. You help me cut any wood off, yeah. all right? Do? <laughs> nice. We kind of have to stomp around it a little bit, a little dance in order to help it grow. <laughs> Ya se puede quedar a trabajar aquí si gusta, ¿eh? You can stay yeah. here and work. Sí. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna try my machete skills here on this agave plant. We are going to remove the heart of the plant, or the, uh, what, what do you call this? Cojollo. Cojollo? Mm -hmm. We're gonna remove the cojollo so that uh, all the sugars are concentrated in the piña. Not hard enough. Not yeah, a little hard harder, enough. a little more strength. <laughs> There you go. Woo! Okay, better. <laughs> he made it look so easy. Yeah. 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 Interesting. That's cool. We just cut open the agave, and we have the heart, the piña, on the ground here. He's gonna cut a little piece for us to try. The flavor is not as sweet as you would think. It's a very tiny bit sweet. You can find that it's a little sticky, but it's very similar to kind of like like between jicama and coconut, yeah. I guess you could say. I just learned how to harvest this agave. I am shocked actually at how shallow the root system is with yeah. the agave. It's so interesting um, how they can just pull it pretty much out of the ground. With the seed from the agave, it takes like 18 to 20 something years. And yeah. then if you take the small plant that grows next to it, it's like six to eight years for it to grow. So we have made it to tequila. I want to give you guys a couple quick facts about uh, tequila. So first off, tequila is made from the agave plant. There are over 140 varieties of agave around the world, but you can only call tequila tequila if it is from one of the five origin states of the blue agave plant here in Mexico. Something that we just learned that I really like is that this town, tequila, is one of the seven magic towns here in the state of Jalisco. You guys have seen one of the magic towns that we saw in Michoacan, and now we get to see another one. This is the legend of Tequila, the goddess Maya Wei, and her lover ran away from home and turned themselves into plants to hide from their grandmother. The grandmother found out, sent lightning down to destroy them. They were replanted and grew into agave plants, and that's where the agave came from, basically. But in real life, back in the old, old days before the Spaniards came, the natives would eat the agave that had been struck by lightning and it had uh, cooked the sugars and fermented, turning into sort of a agave wine. And then the Spaniards took that and distilled it into tequila, and yeah. that is where we actually have tequila from in its origin. Okay, we are at Jose Cuervo now, and we're gonna join a tour and check it out. Here at Jose Cuervo, this is where they get all their agaves. They pretty much take them straight from the field and they drop them off here, about 100 tons a day. That is a lot of agaves. Then they take them by hand and put them inside the machine. What we also learned is that 50,000 liters of tequila is made at this factory alone daily. That is a lot of tequila. This is the oven where they put the agaves in and they bake them for, I think she said 36 hours. And then uh, a lot of them, they cut them open because they're very dense, but they need to get to the heart of, of the agave 
make it soft. So when they make the piña soft from cooking, they can crush it and squeeze yeah. out any moisture that's inside it. It's not, there's no actual liquid, but it squishes out any moisture. It's very interesting and very cool. They have ovens lined all across here so that they can put all the piñas inside. Agave that's been cooked for 38 hours. Take the juices, which is the sweet part, right out of it. Mm. Okay, I like this, I think, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's delicious. So it's really sweet, soft, tangy. It's like, um, I don't know, like she was saying, agave nectar. This is where that would come from. So it's something that I think what I would have with a cup of tea, you know? It tastes almost like a like soft a cookie, honey. yeah, yeah, that you put honey on her. One of the cool things I just learned about tequila, and I had no idea of this before, is that originally tequila was white, blank. There was no aging process at all, and in the 1960s, Jose Cuervo introduced an aging process. So there's different varieties, but they're all aged in white oak, either French or American oak, um, in actually pretty short period of time. Like uh, you said, a month to several years, depending on the reserve. That's not very long compared to a whiskey or something. From the different classes that exist, there are two categories. We have tequilas that are 100% de agave and bottles of tequilas with added sugars. So any bottle, any aging, any distillery that on the label specifies 100% de agave on its label. What this is letting you know is that all of the sugars that this tequila has, it is only coming from the primary material, only from the agave plant. Then we have bottles like Dulce Cuervo Gold Line. These tequilas contain 51% of sugar from the agave, and the rest of the sugar is either cane or corn. These are meant for blending into a cocktail, and that's the only reason these tequilas are made. When tequilas that say 100% de agave, like these here do, these are meant for having pure and alone. We recommend that you do not blend them so we don't lose what these tequilas are offering. Now, all of the tequila that we're aging in here, all of the barrels that we have around are basically the Reserva de la Familia, which is our premium wine brand. It came out in 1995, celebrating a 200 year anniversary. Every single year they only make 10,000 bottles of this tequila and it is our premium line, our 100% best tequila that we have. We are in La Cava de Familia de Reserva, the family reserve of Jose Cuervo, and this is a pretty special area. Not everyone gets to come in here, and I'm really excited because I'm drawing my own family reserve of tequila f direct from the barrel. Okay, ready for this? Wow. Not bad at all. Yeah, man, the flavors the flavors imparted from that white oak over six years. I am now a fan of tequila, but unfortunately <laughs> I, I can't afford this on my own. So we have to come here and work with Jose Cuervo. <laughs> we have left the family reserve and we've come up here to the bar to enjoy a little drink before we actually head off to lunch. I did want to share something with you. The family reserve, which is aged for six years, goes for about $200 a bottle which means I'm holding about $60 worth of tequila in my hand. I don't think I have ever drank anything that expensive before. So this is a special experience. Also down in the cellar, something that I thought was really interesting, they have 120 proof tequila from the 18 and 1900s down there. And recently they took that tequila, aged it just like the family reserve, and that goes for about 30,000 pesos per bottle. They sell only 250 bottles per year. I'm enjoying this way too much. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this garlic. That's it. Came just across the street to Fonda Cholula for lunch and Josh decided to get tortas a jagalas and my lunch I got bruchatas, which is a skewer of beef on the agave plant. That's pretty cool. We have been recommended to try tortas ahogadas so many times, so we're finally getting it here. And I think it's apropos because it is sort of known in pop culture to be, uh, it's, like, it's like a hangover meal.
So I want to say it's like a Mexican French dip sandwich. It has a tomato sauce instead of au jus, and it has pork meat in instead. But it's kind of the same idea. I really like it. We have come to the last stop on our tour of tequila to La Cofradia. It is a tequila factory just outside uh, the city limits of tequila. One thing that's really cool, we just learned that tequila basically means in the original language, a place where you get cut by the rocks, something like that. And you can see on the ground right here that we have obsidian rocks. And the reason that we have the obsidian is because of the volcano in the Tequila region. It erupted many, many years ago, deposited obsidian as well as lots of other minerals into the earth. And that is part of what gives the agave so much of its flavor and nutrients. Now we have two agave plants here. We have the blue agave, which is what tequila is made from. And then we have this more green agave plant, which is what mascal is made from. And further off into the sunlight, which you probably can't see because it's blown out, is all different types of agave plants. We mentioned before over 140 different varieties of agave plants. Okay, we are at La Cofradia and we are being taught the method to test whether a tequila is good or not. Let's find out. <laughs> oh. We're tequila. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We smell like tequila. I need you to, yeah? to smell it. The first thing you need to smell is that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay, so. let's still do it. <laughs> That's you, strong. Just taste the agave, right? You remember? When yeah, you I remember the agave. agave. The, the agave cook, right? It seems like such a, a, a waste of good tequila. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a, a nah, way. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Change. Oh, it's super sweet, huh? Yeah, you can smell the, the, the agave and all that. That oh, sweet crazy. taste that we it had before. Go, yeah. like, does it, the alcohol just evaporates. Yes, and you get the, the real tequila, the, the real flavor. Like super sweet, like what we took out of the... Yeah, the, the, cooked, the cooked agave. The cooked agave. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, it's that smell of the taste. And now I'm sticking. <laughs> no, actually it will go, the sticky will go. It will go? Yes, because... Because it's so pure. It's, it's pure. It's if we have 100% tequila, uh -huh. the sticky will go. Wow. And it actually doesn't smell anymore. It doesn't smell. Yeah, it's very, very faint. How is the correct way to take a tequila? Okay. First we have to make a little kiss. Mm -hmm. To the tequila, so? get a, a little tiny eater of the tequila, make a, a, a wash in your mouth. Okay. Then you're going to take a deep breath, get all the shots, play with it in your mouth, drink it, get your air out. It will be different. It burns. It burns, but <laughs> it's different. It's different. <laughs> Okay, we are back at Via Calavera now. We had such a fun time. Thank you so much to Arthur from Adventura de Jalisco. The links are for everything that we did today is down in the description below. If you want to know anything about what we did today, we had such a fun time. Yeah, I loved learning about the tequila. I learned more about tequila than I have in my entire life. And I literally drank more tequila than I have in my entire life. In one day. Wave fam, I hope we encourage you to get there and travel today. Come visit Tequila. It's yeah, a, I do. It's a day trip from Guadalajara. Yeah, and it's well, well worth it to learn about the agave and how they make everything. Yeah. It was just, yeah, mind blowing. Yep. Awesome. I hope we encourage you to get there and travel today. We'll, we'll see, see you in the next, next video. video. Adios. Yes.